All right, so here we are in my buddy's shop, Larry. And it's Larry, this is the YouTube people. Hello, they're, YouTube they're people. They're out there. So today, Larry's going to show me how to uh, make a pepper mill out of those um, segmented pieces that I glued up and showed you earlier. Well, just not earlier. Longer for me, but like a second earlier for you. <laughs> so tell us what we're going to be making. Okay, this is a, one of my standard 8-inch pepper mills. Um, I try to make them with a little bit of a feminine shape. I found that those sell a little bit better. It has a spherical ball on the top. It doesn't have to be perfectly round, but the more spherical the better. Uh, it features a, a recess to make it easy to fill, and it also hides the joint with the ball. And I typically make two half inch beads down on the bottom. After we get all that created, we'll, we'll recess the bottom make it so the the shaft fits perfectly and we'll talk about how to get that correct as you as you we move along because you got to get that figured out early on now i i told everybody earlier well a couple of seconds ago um that you made like thousands of these over the years yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so, so you got this pretty much down pat yeah pretty much it's just muscle memory these days All right. so i'll be while, while he's uh turning when he starts turning he'll tell me and i'll time how long it takes him to turn out one of these and then uh hopefully later on i'll get the ambition i'll be ambitious enough to make two sets of them and i'll time myself and show you the difference between a professional and me oh i'm a professional now yeah yeah well you sell them you sell them so it makes you professional all right okay. let's get to work Charcuterie board. Now all you gotta do is just call them that, that's all. Most pepper mill um, instructions don't have that you concave that in. So uh, this is a unique thing that he does to help make it easier to fill the pepper mills uh, later on and to give the ball a better fit onto it. Take off that cut I just did. Mm -hmm. The natural tendency is to put a tool to grab and run this way. Yeah. Don't let it do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easier, easier said than done, my friend. So that little tool he used, the measurement to make it eight inch so that he knows exactly how far the machine parts work in it. Yeah, so you can, uh, this is for making an eight inch mill. It's actually seven and three quarters. And there, we want the shaft to stick out a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And when we do the bottom, we're going to do 19 turns to, to get it to uh, line up with 
the width of the mechanism. You got a recess and everything just right. So like I said, he has this down to a science. You can do the bees with that. Um, but I, this one, I, I can get less catches. Now, is this a uh, spindle? Yeah, this is a 3 8 spindle gun. 3 8 spindle gun. So here's where it happened real fast. I want to leave plenty of room to come back, so I'm going to I'm going to start this cut on the high stuff. I'm taking my body around and cutting till the till the tip starts to come back towards. Me. Man, big openings. Man, that resin just went right through. It got some of them. That's right there. And viola, keeping new resin. Okay, so I just sprayed this with denatured alcohol. And the reason I did that is it, it's going to raise the grain just a little bit. And we we want to raise the grain so we can get a baby's bottom smooth finish. Once again, this thing wants to go that way. Just don't let it do that. Yeah, easy for you to say. What, so how do I do that? I, I uh, put my hand on top of the tool. And this got me. I, I start with the bevel. I start with the bevel, and then I, I tip into it. So you basically have it open upwards a little bit. Well, I'm a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I swear, I don't like sharp edges on anything. Yeah. So, um, and also, you know, we're developing the Venturi for the high speed. Salt, yeah. Because the salt even comes out quicker because it's smaller. So you definitely have to have a, a good Venturi for that.
All right, so everybody, there it is. We have our salt and, salt and pepper meal that uh, Larry cranked out relatively fast. And you're going to see how fast it really is once I try to do the same thing. You're going to see how much longer it takes. But um, I think on this one, when you turn this out, it was less than an hour by the time start to finish. Yeah, usually it's this part goes really fast. It's adjusting the bottom to the ball is the yeah and takes getting, a minute. You know. Yeah, but, but I mean you have that down to the science with your measuring sticks and everything else. So yeah, very cool. So these are our two salt and pepper uh, mills, and uh, I'm gonna try and reproduce them on my own and see how well that goes. But we're not sure. Anything you want to add to these? Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it has. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I don't do segmented stuff normally, so it was interesting to see the difference between this and the woods I usually use. So Yeah, because you use avocado most of the time, right? Most of the time I use avocado. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's just uh, already there and you just go right to it. You don't have to worry about segmented pieces flying off. Or... Yeah, it's, it's about the same density as walnut, but uh, because I'm going into a natural piece, I don't have the drilling issues and stuff. Yeah, like that, so. yeah, that we have, yeah. So there it is. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.